Dubai started out as a desert. But when you come to Dubai, you see the way the fixtures are growing, you see the way the real estate market is growing, you see technology, that global access. So I came to Dubai more for global access. One of the things I love about Dubai is you're only five introductions away from the right person. In Dubai, it's actually more about what you know, what you can do, what you can deliver. Yeah, I would say it's the new stage for the world because if you want to do something big, you come to Dubai. It's really hard to, to leave Dubai because of all of this. It's a place that shows you so much possibility, right? It's sufficient and everything's accessible and it's just, it works and it works. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'm in the UAE and I'm in Dubai specifically. I'm actually doing this video for a reason. Now this is not gonna be like one of those very fancy travel videos. I just want to share the reality. I wanted to understand what it actually is to live and make money in Dubai. If Dubai is actually a good place to move to and do your business, or if it is not, because a lot of my friends have moved and everybody is moving. So I'm like, I'm like, hey man, Excuse me, um, do, do you live here? I do. Okay, you live in this community? Yes. I see, because I see you're, you know, we have the same skin tone, so I'm like, <laughs> are you African? Well, once, yes, from the diaspora. I'm Caribbean, so... You're from the Caribbean? Thing. Yes, yes. Oh. Jamaica. You're from Jamaica? Yes. <laughs> okay, you live in this neighborhood? Yes. You're based right here in Dubai? I am based here in Dubai. Okay, guys, I think she makes a better... <laughs> uh, she made, she, she's very fit for what I want to do today. So, yes. um, as I was telling my audience, like I'm actually visiting Dubai. I want to show them what it is to work and live in Dubai. Do you work and live here? I absolutely do and you are definitely in the right place. Let's Welcome to my channel. Hey, hey, how so you tell doing? So tell us a bit <laughs> what you do right here in Dubai. Hey, hey, my name is Kai. I'm the founder of Black Girl in Dubai and living in the UAE for approximately five and a half years now. And with that being said, I've understood the challenges, the highs, the lows, and all the different things across the diversity and uh, African diaspora. So I would love to take you around to see just the beautiful array of businesses and people that live right here in the UAE. She has a platform called Black, Black Girl, Girl in Dubai. Dubai. So what she's gonna do for me today is take me to Black owned businesses and then we're gonna share their stories and their actual experience of living and working in Dubai as an African. Yes. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Are you excited about the video? Absolutely. All right, let's go. <laughs> if you have been considering moving to Dubai to start a business, this video would provide you some clarity. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel if it's your first time here and give this video a like to make it more discoverable. My first stop was at a Nigerian-owned beauty salon by Comfort and I met the founder, Miss Comfort. She's a Nigerian. She moved to Dubai five years ago, hustled her way up from doing housekeeping jobs in a hotel to starting her own salon and her other businesses. Why did you choose to move to Dubai to start a business? It was because I actually had an uncle here. Since I got in, I've not stepped out. Wow. Yes. <laughs> so <Okay. laughs> I, initially I left um, the country because I wanted to start up something because and it was Ni not working Nigeria in Nigeria. Nigeria wasn't really fertile yeah, for what you wanted so to I do. Yeah, so I just came here. And when I came here, it was not like the job I wanted to start, I got it immediately. So basically I started with what I could get at the time, which was housekeeping. From housekeeping in a hotel to waitressing, from waitressing, at that time I took advantage of a whole lot of trainings and glass savings and all that. And when I finished my contracts, accumulation and all that, got the funding I could get, borrowed the ones I could borrow, took out a loan, liquidated wow. a whole lot. And yeah. You talked about like Nigeria wasn't working. Was yeah. that the sole reason why you decided to come to Dubai? Yes. Because I was going to ask you, okay, you have left Nigeria to Dubai. What is so special about Dubai? How good is Dubai for your business? To be honest, it's yeah. amazing. You know, unlike some some countries whereby it's your certificate, what you read, as in what, what, what you know. What you read in school. School and all that. In Dubai, it's actually more about what you know, what you can do, what you can deliver. Yeah. To be honest, about your skills. Nobody cares about what exactly you study in school. Exactly the point. Yeah. Because, okay, imagine when I came in first, I wanted something I could not get it at the time. I started with what I could, right? Which was housekeeping. Okay, over time I graduated to like waitressing. Fine. I still was searching. I did not give up on what I wanted to do. But in between all that time, 
I had advantages of doing a whole lot of cross trainings. Okay, imagine I was a waitress and I did cross training in front office, guest relation, sales and marketing, hostessing, taking or as in bagging certificates that I know that if I wow. had gone to the, if I had gone to any school to get that, you know how much that would cost me. Wow. That's the advantage. And when I finished, I just realized, okay, am I have I equipped myself enough to do what I want? To, even if I did not have that money, but I just knew that okay, I would find a way, you know, to get the whole wow. Um, wow. Wow. capital together. But the truth is, imagine if I had started the job I wanted to do when I initially came into Dubai. I don't think I would have actually been able to do that excellently because. I lack most of the knowledge. Aside the fact that I was a graduate, I lacked the knowledge to be able to even work here to begin with. So my journey wow. so far to now has been a blessing and it's the country itself. It's working. The advantage of the country, it's really working. And, that's and how, how easy was it for you to set up a business? Coming from Nigeria, I mean, we have mm -hmm. a lot of bad names out there, right? So when you come to a country and yeah. you, you want to start a business, you bring out your green passport, there's this hesitation, yeah. okay? So how, was it, how easy was it for you or how hard was it for you to start a business to in Dubai? To be honest, if I just have to say the truth, I did not have any single issue because I was a Nigerian starting up a business in Dubai. Aside the fact that, okay, except you already have your capital, which you have to raise and all that. See, it's, the truth is, if you, if you decide to go about things the right way in Dubai, I don't think your passport actually really matters. It doesn't matter, at right? At all. Because if I wanted to start up a company, I needed to register, right? Going to, the, I was in, going to register my company at the government offices had nothing to do with my passport. It was more like, okay, what do you want to do? You choose the field you want to you register. And I had a company to help me do that because it made it a whole lot easier for me. And I had, okay, I raised the money to start up the, at the business. Okay, Ijaria, look, it's more like, it's always by the book. It doesn't have to do with, okay, okay, nobody, Nigeria, cares about nobody your... is going to give you like a license because you're, no, no. Although fine, there are some other areas that the passport has, you know, affect, but not when it comes to opening a business. Second stop was a visit to Ojamia, a Nigerian-owned e-commerce platform operating in the UAE. I met the founder, Timothy. He shared the ups and downs of running an e-commerce business in Dubai. I'm the founder of Ojamia.com. Ojamia. Ojamia, yeah, which simply means markets, Middle East and Asia. Ojamia.com is a simple platform, uh, a technology platform that uh, allows small scale businesses um, new market entrants to be able to list their products yeah. and able to sell their products to a wider audience and demographic. I'd like to know why you choose Dubai as a city to do that from. If we look around at the moment, the most diverse cities around the world right now, Dubai yeah. is in top three. You have over 200 nationalities in here. Dubai is a growing city and I would say is the new stage for the world because if you want to do something big, you come to Dubai. For me, Dubai is a green space, it's a green field. Uh, okay. In most other cities like in New York or in the UK, there are traditional people, traditional traders. Not that we don't have them here, but they've been there for longer, for 50, 60, 80 years. A lot of the markets there is already developed, unlike in Dubai, whereby new communities, new districts yeah, are being yeah. born every day, new people are coming into town. That would, you know, really impact and help what build the community, yes. Yeah. Is there a word or two you can say to a startup out there looking to you know, looking for a fertile ground to grow from? The very first thing I'll say is make sure that you own your product. When I mean you own it, you know it. You understand your product. You know how to market your product and develop your product to such a standard that it can be compared to the likes of Walkers, you know, Nestle and brand. the rest. Use them as a standard for you to be able to push your product. Look to get people that are experts out there to help you and advise you on your products before you even start going out. Because if you go out without knowing what you own or have, you'll be exploited. My third stop was a visit to a realtor and the founder of Nigerians in Dubai. He spoke about why he left Nigeria to Dubai and the need for Africans to package themselves for international opportunities. So I'm a senior property and investment manager at a company called Shoba. Shoba Realty is one of the largest real estate companies in Dubai. We're palace makers. We've done palaces in Dubai, Bahrain, Tajikistan, and all over, all around the world. Now, apart from that, I also run Nigerians in Dubai community. Okay, so what is uh, Nigerian in Dubai community Nigerians about? Nigerians in Dubai is the community of Nigerians living, working, 
and investing in Dubai. Dubai. I pretty much created the community to bring our people together, to change the narrative. But when I first came here, a lot of the content I was seeing around Nigerians were negative. So we're on hmm. Instagram and Nigerians and DXB. But why did you make the decision to leave Nigeria and come to Dubai? Come to Dubai? Okay. That's the first one. And then the second, how was that transition for you? Was it easy or hard? Let's get that experience. Okay. I got to a point in my life where I felt like I was a local champion. Now, apart from the, I was working in PR and marketing. I was writing for CNN. I was writing for BBC. I was writing. Oh, you were for doing Love. pretty well. Yes, I was writing. For, I was doing pretty well. So not I like you left because you were suffering. I did not leave because I was suffering. Now, before I moved to Dubai, Dubai was always my number one destination when it comes to travel. So I'd come to Dubai about four times. Oh, okay. Now, between when I decided to move here and when I moved here, it took me three weeks. Now, I got here. My initial plan wasn't to find a job. It was pretty much to understand the layout of the land, where the opportunities are. I was looking for that next frontier for my life and for my career, that next opportunity. And Dubai, one of the things I'd always liked about Dubai is, Dubai, is a, Dubai started out as a desert. But when you come to Dubai, you see the way the fixtures are growing, you see the way the real estate market is growing, you see technology, that global access. So I came to Dubai more for global access. Dubai is 95% expatriate. So I work with Europeans, I work with Indians, I work with Americans, I work with Nigerians, I work with Kenyans, I work with people from around the world. There are a lot of Nigerians in my company, to be honest. My company loves to hire Nigerians. Really? So yeah, so those are some of the things that they say. It's pretty great. Um, I'm someone that already has global experience because I already done some work in the US and America we already we used to working with people on a global yeah. level. So the transition is pretty easy. My team, I'm the only African in my team. They wow. love me wow. so much. Wow. I speak great English. As Nigerians, <laughs> we speak great English. Yeah, we do way. actually. So there are certain presentations where I'm the one that they call to do the presentation because yeah. I'm the one that can communicate it. The day I joined the company, for example, I won an award. The award was for public speaking. They had just wow. told us a little bit about the projects. And I stood, I went to, and I, because I already had that aptitude. So to yeah. be honest, it's great. I love working with people from all over the world. Dubai is that cultural melting pot. My fourth stop was a visit to the founder of the All African Festival, Mrs. Nina. CEO and co-founder of the All Africa Festival. It is a festival that is based here in Dubai. I dare say the biggest African cultural celebration in, in the, the Middle, Middle East. East and growing every day. It's a celebration of her people. It's a celebration of those cultures that have emerged everywhere. And we do it through music, art, um, food, fashion, um, name it. We try and celebrate the culture that African way. African culture think, in the Middle East. So in the Middle East. My, my, my question would be, why did you choose Dubai out of every other place? That question is one of the biggest questions I get, particularly when I speak to sponsors or people in Africa and I'm trying to convince them here. The first thing I say is that Dubai has made itself the destination and the world stage. Where else would you want to celebrate a culture that has had the biggest impact in culture as we see it today, but the biggest stage in the world? That's the first reason. The second reason why I, I, I would choose Dubai any day is, I mean, the closest thing to what we're trying to achieve is Notting Hill Carnival. The average African cannot just dust their passport, get on a plane and go and watch Notting Hill Carnival. The visa process in itself to Europe or any other country in okay, itself is yeah. challenging. But let's even look at Africa. It is easier for you to get a visa to Dubai within 48 hours as long as you have your ticket and your hotel booking than it is for you as a Nigerian to get a visiting visa to South Africa. That takes you an average of two to four weeks. The accessibility of Dubai makes it the unique melting pot in the world. Everyone is welcomed here. If we are promoting African culture from a holistic perspective, safety and accessibility is part of that because we're not just looking at attracting Africans, but we're also looking at attracting the diaspora culture. To come experience African culture. To come culture. and experience the African culture. I would never have done this in Nigeria. I wouldn't have even had the liver to have pulled something like this in Nigeria. But um, Dubai made it possible. possible. Once we had that vision, it was all about execution and executing with excellence. My fifth stop was a visit to the founder of the Truffle Essence magazine, Mrs. Yvonne. She shared her reasons 
and benefits for running an African-inspired publication in the Middle East. My, my career actually started in, in marketing and when I moved to the UAE, I was quick fast into, into PR and comms and yeah. fortunately for me, I was in the destination marketing space having started off in Victoria Falls. You know, the UAE is a completely different landscape and mm. once you understand the pace at which things move and the innovative culture and spirit of people yeah. that, that work here and live here. Folks are come out here to work, they're hungry to win, right? And so I just kind of threw myself in there, opportunities came, I raised my hand. <laughs> if I didn't know what was going on, I have no shot in saying, guys, I don't know what's going on, but we'll give it our best shot. Yeah. Travel Essence magazine is a product of the desire to tell the African story through our lens. I worked in PR for many, many years, and yeah. obviously as an African and a, a black person in this region, you're, in a, you're a minority. So you, our stuff isn't always out there. We have to create the platforms for us to be able to tell our stories our way. You're from Zimbabwe. Yeah. You left the US. Yes. And now you are in the UAE, and you're a pioneer for you know changing the African narrative and promoting Africa. Yeah. But my question to you is, why do you have to do that from Dubai? Like, what is so special about Dubai? Because people are going to be like, okay, you're promoting Africa, but why aren't you in Africa? Promoting Africa from Africa. So yeah. I know there's a whole explanation behind that, uh -huh. and I would like to hear that from you. I'm promoting Africa. You can promote Africa from wherever you want to be. You can yeah. promote the US. You can promote wherever. You can promote your culture. As a matter of fact, we're an embodiment of our culture and our background, beliefs, values, and all of that, right? There's few places that inspire innovation like Dubai. I, the leadership is really something special to behold and I think the welcoming nature of this country for me is, is, is a whole song because it, it quite literally has opened itself up to so many different nationalities. Listen, 200 plus nationalities reside really? in the UAE. Where do you know that is as diverse? And this is people that literally come here, settle here, start families here, spend a long bit of time here, whether it's long term, short term, it's just the fact that it's so fast paced, there's always something that you can get up to. It's not to say that it's easy. I think it takes a, a certain level of grit and hard work and confidence to yeah. be able to navigate this space because it's highly, highly competitive. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine the other day when she and she was saying, it's really hard to, to leave Dubai because of all of this. Everywhere you turn, there's something pretty to look at. So there's something yeah. to inspire you. There's something to just, you know, take you out of a, out from under a cloud if you're under a cloud. It's a place that shows you so much possibility, right? Yeah. So, so it does make it difficult because it's sufficient and everything's accessible and it's just, it works and it works, you works. know, and it's safe and you, you can go running at 3 a.m. in the morning as a yeah. woman and you don't have to work. Where else in the world, <laughs> in the right? world do you have yeah. those kind of um, experiences? So I know people that have come here on tourist visas, finally landed the job after three months, six months, eight months even, looking for the right job. But when they landed it, it they just took off. You know, yeah. I also know people that came, they tried it and it didn't work for them. There's no blanket way in which one can succeed here. I think at the end of the day, you should, it's such a, a vibrant environment, but it's also quite transient. People come and go really quickly here. Yeah. So you kind of have to figure out which part of that entire puzzle works for you. My takeaways from this video is constantly look for environment that would fill your dreams. These young Africans are just a case study. Special thanks to Kyle for taking me around and introducing me to black business owners. If you're an African visiting Dubai and needs to be connected to black owned businesses, Kyle is a shop love. Uh, we just made a subscriber on the channel right now. What's your name? Uh, my name is Willie. I what? come from Gabon. Gabon? Yeah. So Gabon, all the way from Gabon. I thank you for your thank work. You. May you. God bless <laughs> you guys. Thank you. Hopefully I'm I'll very come to your country very smoothly. My camera. Please. Support the channel by subscribing and hitting the like button. Until the next video, I'll see you soon.